as i mentioned in the previous class when you have a circuit with a single pair of terminals that is a linear circuit with a single pair of terminals it looks like a resistor okay i am considering circuits without any independent sources inside now when you have a circuit with two pairs of terminals uh, we have to find the right representation for it we know that uh, in a linear circuit every quantity will be a linear combination of the sources that are applied to the circuit when i say every quantity i mean every branch voltage and every branch current okay so this linear combination can be represented in different ways and they give rise to different sets of uh, two port parameters okay Let's say this is a single terminal pair, one one prime. And when we have uh, two terminal pairs, we have to relate. V one I one to V two I two. Okay. So that relationship, let's say you relate I1 and I2 to V1 and V2, it gives you a set of uh, two port parameters. Okay. As I had mentioned in the previous classes, unfortunately the setup here is such that I cannot take questions by audio. So please ask your questions on the chat window. Now, uh, this also can be further generalized to many uh, ports. We will not consider that, but I'll just show you here. If you have, let's say, n terminal pairs, you can relate voltages and currents at these terminals. Okay. Now, a particular reason for uh, considering two ports is that many amplifier, many uh, systems we know uh, have one input and one output, and they correspond to uh, this uh, two ports. That is, they are uh, well described by this two port representation. For instance, amplifiers. If you have an amplifier, there is an input and an output, and it's described by this representation. Okay. So that's why uh, we they are represented by two ports. Okay, so that's why we'll study the two port parameters in some detail. I think uh, participants are raising hands to ask questions. As I mentioned, I will not be able to take questions by audio. So please uh, use the chat window to ask any questions you have. Now, I also took an example of a simple circuit and showed that uh, the quantities will be linear combinations. So let me uh, take this example where I have two terminal pairs. Okay, and each terminal pair is called a port. This is port number one. This is port number two. And each port has a voltage and a current 
and these voltages or currents voltages and currents are defined in uh, direction consistent with the passive sign convention that is v1 is with uh, plus on top then i1 goes into the upper terminal similarly for v2 sorry this is v2 okay now uh, we can apply either voltage sources or current sources to uh, either side and measure the remaining two quantities okay so for instance we can apply v1 and v2 and measure i1 and i2 when i say measure what i mean is i write i1 and i2 in terms of v1 and v2 okay Uh, alternatively, I could uh, apply I1 and I2 and measure V1 and V2. Okay. And I could also apply V1 and I2 and measure I1 and V2. Or I apply I1 and V2. And measure V1 and I2. Okay. So all these are possible. So for each of these, there is a set of uh, uh, two port parameters that will describe the relationship. Okay. So what do I mean by uh, when I say I apply V1 and V2 and measure I1 and I2? It means that. I have voltage sources connected to the two ports and then I will write I1 and I2 in terms of V1 and V2. Okay. Now clearly uh, I1 can be written as some number Y11 times V1 plus some other number Y12 times V2 and similarly I2 can be written as some third number y21 times v1 plus a fourth number y22 times v2. Okay. So we discussed this in the uh, previous lecture. Now uh, these numbers y11, y12, y21 and y22, uh, these are uh, numbers with dimensions of conductance. Okay. Now the numbers that appear here will uh, depend on the parameter set we choose. In this case, we are reading, writing currents as uh, uh, something proportional to voltages. So, these will have dimensions of conductances. Okay. Now, we also said uh, that this kind of relationship comes about because this whole thing is a linear circuit. Okay. That denotes the effect. Okay. And the second one, the cause. What I mean is this Y11 relates I1 to V1. Okay. So, this I1 uh, means the first uh, subscript is 1 and it is due to V1 means the second subscript is also 1. Whereas in this case, Y21 relates I2 to V1. Okay. So, in general, YKL will relate IK to VL. Okay. So, this is the uh, convention that is used. So, again, let me, uh, if you want to uh, if you didn't understand how these relationships come about, first of all, it is a linear circuit, right? So, a linear circuit means superposition will apply, okay? So, you can think of this as a superposition of two cases where uh, one where v1 is 0 and the other one where v2 is 0. If v2 is 0, both these currents will be proportional to v1. Okay, So, we will get this part. And if v1 is 0, 
both of these currents will be proportional to V2. We'll get that part. And if you have both of them non-zero, then uh, you get the sum of the two. Okay. So this part comes about when V2 equals zero, and this part comes about when V1 equals zero. Okay. So now, uh, let us say you are given a circuit with uh, two ports and you are asked to determine the values of these uh, parameters. What will you do? How will you measure it? Please give me some ideas. Let us say, how will I measure the value of Y12? Okay. You can relate this to uh, earlier examples we did many times. That is, if you have a one port, okay, then uh, you want to find out what it looks like looking into this terminal pair. What we did was to apply some test voltage and measure the current. Okay, so taking the ratio of voltage to current, we get the uh, resistance looking into this one. Okay. Similarly, now uh, in this case, I want to measure Y12. What should I do? What is it that I can do to measure the value of Y12? So, in general, uh, to measure any of these things, you have to set uh, some voltages to zero and apply only one voltage. Okay. So, instead of applying both voltages simultaneously, you have to apply just one of them. Okay, so let us see. Now, first of all, let us say I set uh, V2 to 0. Okay, so if I set V2 to 0, it is the same as saying that port 2 is short circuited. Okay, so if I substitute that with V2 equal to 0, what I will get is I1 is Y11 V1. Okay. So Y11 is nothing but I1 by V1 with V2 set to 0. Okay. Similarly, I2 would be Y21 V1 and Y21 is I2 by V1 with V2 set to 0. Okay. So, to measure Y11 and Y21, you have to apply V1 short circuit port 2 and measure the currents in port 1 and port 2. Okay. So, I think this is pretty obvious from the equations. If I set uh, V2 equal to 0, the second part of these things goes away, go away and uh, you will be left with only this. And then you can find each parameter individually. By measuring I1, you can measure Y11. By measuring I2, you will measure Y21. Okay. Similarly, it is also very clear that Y12 can be measured by setting V1 to 0 and measuring I1. Okay. 
you measure i1 by v2 with v1 equal to 0. When v1 equals 0, this part goes away and y12 will be i1 divided by v2. Okay. And similarly, y22 will be i2 divided by v2 with v1 set to 0. Okay. So I, I hope this is clear. So y11 and y21, these are measured with port 2 short circuited and y12 and y22, these are measured with port 1 short circuited. Okay. So that's why these y parameters are also called short circuit parameters. Okay. So y11 which is i1 by v1 with v2 set to 0 and what is i1 by v1? It is current going into port 1 divided by the voltage applied at a port at the same port. Okay. So, if you apply a voltage between some pair of terminals and measure a current through the same pair of terminals, it is like measuring the resistance or conductance uh, across those across that pair of terminals. Okay. So, this is nothing but conductance at port 1 with port 2 short circuited. Okay. So, if you imagine the picture, we will have it like this. Okay, so this is uh, how we are measuring y11. Okay, so it's pretty clear that once you short circuit this, you can think of this as a, a single port network when you are measuring i1. Okay, so you are applying v1, measuring i1, taking the ratio of the two, i1 by v1. So it is like measuring the conductance between this terminal and that terminal. Is this clear? Okay. Now, if you look at uh, Y21, it is I2 by V1 with V2 equal to 0. The picture is the same except that you are not measuring I1, okay, but you are measuring I2. Okay. Now, uh, you are applying a voltage to port 1 and measuring the current in port 2. Okay. So, th this one is not a conductance. Conductance is when you apply a voltage to some pair of terminals and measure a current going into the same uh, pair of terminals. Here, you are applying a voltage here but uh, measuring the current on the other side. So, this kind of a thing, it has dimensions of conductance. It is I2 by V1, but it is at different ports and this is known as transconductance port 1 to port 2 with port 2 short circuit. Okay. So, Y11 is like a conductance and Y21 is like a transconductance from port 1 to port 2. Transconductance means that something that you apply here 
has an effect on that port okay so now please uh, give me the interpretation of y22 okay what is y22 we know that it is i2 by v2 with v1 equal to 0 so please give me uh, sort of the verbal interpretation of what this parameter is y22 Yeah, so that is exactly right. Uh, this is conductance at port 2 with port 1, short circuited. And similarly, Y12, which is I1 by V2 with V1 being 0 is transconductance from port 1 to sorry from port 2 to port 1 with port 1 short circuited. Okay. So now uh, when I say measure, it also applies to calculations. So when you are given a circuit and you are asked to calculate the Y parameters, this is how you have to do it. Okay, to calculate Y11, you short circuit port 2, measure uh, I1 and divide it by I1 to get Y11. Okay, and so on. So we will take an example of this uh, later. Okay. Now another thing is, uh, the equivalent circuit. Equivalent circuit representation. What do I mean by this? Again, let us go back to one port. So, if I have a single pair of terminals, okay, then we know that this I1 will be linearly related to V1 and at these two terminals we can always represent any linear one port uh, with an equivalent resistance. Okay? This REQ will be nothing but V1 by I1 and we can also find the conductance if we want. So my question is now uh, we have to do a similar thing for uh, two port that is this circuit, this very simple circuit is the equivalent of this whole box, whatever complicated circuit be inside. As far as these two terminals are concerned, that is very important. When we say it is equivalent, we should find out what, uh, where is the equivalence. At these two terminals, the voltage current behavior will be the same as in this complicated circuit. Inside this, you could have hundreds of resistors and uh, linear control sources and so on. So, all of them will finally reduce to this linear relationship between V1 and I1. So, similarly for a two port, we have to come up with a relationship. Okay. That is, we now have equations which describe the behavior. Okay. Now, I would like to have a circuit representation of this sort. Okay. So, what is that uh, going to be? So, let me copy over this part of it. So, let me take uh, each term uh, one by one and then try to make a representation. 
So first of all, I'll take this part i1, and I'll take the first term of that y11 times v1. Okay. So if I have i1 equals y11 times v1, and let me draw the two port here. So I should have some uh, circuit element which will realize this relationship. I want I1 to be proportional to V1 with this uh, constant Y11. Okay. So what is the circuit element that will realize this relationship? And where should I connect it in the circuit? That is, I have four terminals here: one, one prime, two, two prime. So what is the circuit element that will realize just this relationship? where I have taken only the first term in uh, I1 and how do I connect it so that I get just this relationship. This should be pretty simple. In fact, you can uh, very easily see that it is more or less equivalent to a one port network. So again, uh, I think you are able to get the answer quite quickly. So this, you see, is just a conductance Y11 connected between I1 and V1. Okay. So when I write Y11, Y11 has dimensions of conductance. So when I write a resistor and write Y11 next to it, so that means that the conductance of this resistor is Y11. Okay. So this will e clearly realize. If I apply V1 here, a current will flow which is equal to Y11 times V1. Okay. So now let me take the first term of the second uh, equation, the equation for I2. Now, what is an element that will realize this? That is, I want to now realize I2 equals Y21 V1. Okay. So, what is the element that is going to realize this and how do I connect it to this circuit? Here it says that the current uh, in 2, 2 prime is proportional to the voltage across 1, 1 prime. So what is, a, uh, what is an element that is going to realize this relationship? Okay, I think uh, one of you has answered this. If you have a current somewhere dependent on voltage elsewhere, clearly it's a voltage controlled current source. Okay, so this is a voltage controlled current source. It says that the current going into port 2 in this direction, this is I2, right? So always keep in mind that this I1 and I2 are currents flowing into the ports. It's a voltage controlled current source. 
which is controlled by V1. Okay, so this I will write Y21 V1. Okay. So it's a voltage control current source controlled by V1 and connected across 2 to prime in this direction. Okay. Now similarly, if I take the other uh, terms Y12 V2, the current uh, in port 1 is dependent on voltage at port 2. Okay. So clearly here also we need a dependent source. And finally, this term, the current in port 2 is dependent on voltage at port 2. So, current and voltage are at the same port. So, we can uh, use a conductance which is Y22. Okay. So, this is an equivalent circuit representation of a two port network. Okay, any linear two port can be represented like this. That is the advantage of this. See, the point of having all these representations is that, uh, I think I have repeated this many times before, you will end up designing very complex circuits that which have lots of components. Now, the person who is using that may not need to know all the internal details. So, let us say you have this black box which has uh, hundreds of resistors and control sources and whatnot. But it has only two pairs of terminals brought out. Okay. So, someone who is using this does not need to know all the intricacies of the circuit inside. They only need to know the current voltage behavior at the terminals. Okay. So, as long as you have only two ports exposed to the outside world, they can be represented by just four numbers Y11, Y12, Y21, Y22. Okay. And anyone uh, doing any analysis of this black box or any other uh, system using this black box can use those four numbers to do their analysis, okay. Or equivalently, they can use this uh, uh, two port equivalent circuit, this thing I have shown here to do their analysis, okay. So, however complicated the circuit is inside, it can be replaced by this much, okay. Of course, you have to find the value of Y11, Y12, Y21 and Y22, okay. Is this clear? Any questions about this? So, this is analogous to in case of one port, I can always represent it by a single resistor. In case of two ports, I need four uh, parameters because there is a resistance across 1 1 prime, there is a resistance across 2 2 prime, but also if you apply something to 1 1 prime, it affects something at 2 2 prime. Similarly, you apply something to 2 2 prime, it affects uh, something at 1 1 prime. Okay. So, with all these uh, interactions, we will need four uh, parameters to describe a two port network, okay. Any questions about this? Okay, uh, the question is how do you say it is a voltage controlled current source? Because the current is a function of a voltage, so it is this is the input, this is the output, so to speak. So it is controlled by this voltage and uh, gives you that current. So it is a voltage controlled current source. Okay. So one of the questions is what is the use of these parameters? As I said, 
you can describe a complicated circuit however complicated is it, it is inside to uh, our complicated it's inside with these four parameters that's the use basically it's a representation and also you could have two different circuits inside okay but uh, let's say you have two black boxes each of them has two ports and the internal details are different but if the y parameters are the same so that means that they'll behave equivalently okay so you could have one circuit with 100 resistors the another one with 50 resistors and if you arrange it such that the y parameters are the same then uh, they if you use this black box in some other circuit they will behave identically okay so basically it's a matter of representation and it turns out that uh, it turns out that more complicated circuits like uh, more complicated devices like transistors which you will encounter later which are used to make amplifiers and so on can be represented using these y parameters or some other two port parameters okay so the other question is why do we have a conductance here see if you have a current at some pair of terminals proportional to the voltage at the same pair of terminals it has to be a conductance right or a resistance okay so if the picture looks like this you have two terminals the voltage here is proportional to current there or the current there is proportional to the voltage here so it means that uh, it means that uh, the equivalent thing is a conductance okay is the audio not clear Okay. So now uh, let's take an example. Okay. Let's take a simple example. So this is my circuit, this is port 1 and this is port 2. So please find the uh, y parameters of this okay? and then you can uh, give me the answer by typing it into the chat window. First of all, please find the value of y11. Again uh, to do this, you can recall the uh, definition, there are many ways of doing it. First of all, you can uh, apply voltages to both sides, find all the currents and obviously it will be in uh, this form and you can find these numbers. Okay. Alternatively, you can use the definitions we came up with earlier that Y11 is conductance at port 1 with port 2 short circuited and Y21 is transconductance from port 1 to port 2 with port 2 short circuited and so on. Okay. So first is please give me the value of uh, Y11. So there is an answer from Arthi, but it doesn't sound uh, seem to be correct. So please uh, take note of the values correctly. So this is uh, 
2 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms and 8 kilo ohms and uh, how will you find y11? What will you do to port 2? And one more thing I have to point out, which also I have mentioned repeatedly, that please try to get a feel for the numbers and always give numbers with units where applicable. Okay, we would never say that uh, the distance between Chennai and Bangalore is 360, right? It is 360 kilometers. So similarly, whenever you have quantities with dimensions, you have to include the appropriate unit. Okay, because if I just say 360, it is not clear if it is 360 kilometers or meters or millimeters or whatever it is. Okay. So, always give the number with the appropriate unit. Okay, so one milli Moho, or usually I prefer to say Siemens uh, for uh, the unit of conductance. So this is one milli Siemens. Okay, how do we get this? You short circuit port two. Once you do that, this eight kilo ohm goes out of the picture. It is short circuited, and you see that this two kilo ohms and that two kilo ohms are really in parallel with each other. Okay. So, looking into 1 1 prime, we have 2 kilo ohm parallel 2 kilo ohm, which is a 1 kilo ohm resistance, but y11 is the conductance. So, 1 divided by 1 kilo ohm is 1 millisiemens. Okay. Similarly, now what is uh, y21? Please find the value of y21. I mean, I jump to y21 because it is also measured with uh, port 2 short circuited. Okay, I think a couple of you gave the right answer immediately. It is uh, 1 millisiemens again, but one of you has said it is 1.6 millisiemens. I am not sure how you got it, but that is not correct because if I apply V1 here, now what I have to measure is first of all, the current I2 measured in this direction. Okay. So, keeping this in mind, please give me the correct answer. I2 is measured going into the uh, network. Okay. By definition, that is how I1 and I2 are. I1 and I2 are. Okay. What is the value of Y21? So, I need uh, not only the correct magnitude, but also the sign. Okay, so let us look at this uh, carefully. Uh, here, this is short circuited. So, all of this V1 appears uh, across this 2 kilo ohms, okay, because port 2 is short circuited. So, the voltage here is V1, okay. So, a current 
V1 divided by 2 kilo ohm will flow in this uh, direction. Okay. So now what is V1 divided by 2 kilo ohm? It is V1 times 0 0.5 millisiemens. Okay. So this is the 8 kilo ohm is not in the picture. Okay. So this is short circuited. So if I apply V1 here, all of it appears across this 2 kilo ohm and V1 by 2 kilo ohm flows in this direction. Okay. Also, this direction is opposite to that of the definition of Y2. So, what is the value of Y21? It is minus 0 0.5 millisiemens. Okay. I hope this calculation is clear. If it is not, please let me know immediately so that I can uh, repeat how to do that. Okay, so what is Y21? I apply V1 to port 1 and I short circuit port 2 and I measure the current through the short circuit. Okay, so that is the current in port 2 and in this direction going into this terminal 2. Okay, so now what is the circuit I have? inside this box ok so that is the uh, two port network and these are the terminals and I apply V1 here and this part is short circuited ok. So I hope it is very clear that V1 is applied here so the voltage across this is V1 and similarly this is short circuited all the way through so the voltage across this is 0 right 8 kilo ohm is uh, uh, connected in parallel with the short circuit and V1 appears across this 2 kilo ohms ok. So, V1 appears across this 2 kilo ohms. Now, uh, the current through this 2 kilo ohm resistor is V1 divided by 2 kilo ohms. Okay. When it appears at this node, it can go either through the 8 kilo ohm or the short circuit. Obviously, if you have something in parallel with the short circuit, everything will go through the short circuit. Okay. This you can easily uh, calculate, I mean, I uh, see from the current divider theorem. So, if you have something across a short circuit all of the current will go through the short circuit ok. So, this V1 by uh, 2 kilo ohm is what flows out like that and remember this I2 is what we are trying to measure going into the network ok. This I2 is what we are trying to measure. So, I2 will be minus V1 divided by 2 kilo ohms ok and this is nothing but Y21 V1 ok. So, Y21 is minus 1 by 2 kilo ohms or minus 0 0.5 milli Siemens. Okay. So, that is how I get the value of Y21 to be minus 0 0.5 milli Siemens. Is this okay? I think one of you has got the answer of uh, uh, minus 12.5. I think it is some uh, simple numerical error. Okay. 
Now there is a question: What is the significance of negative admittance? This is not admittance. Okay, we are not looking at uh, uh, voltage at some port divided by the current at the same port, or current at some port divided by the voltage at the same port. Okay, so that would uh, mean something significant. A negative resistance there means it is generating power. Here, if uh, uh, here we are talking about current at port two divided by voltage at port one. This being negative doesn't have any particular significance. Okay, later I'll show how uh, very easily we can make that positive. Okay, so with this background, you should be able to calculate uh, y12 and y22 quite easily as well. So please give me the values y12 and y22. So you have to be able to calculate this for any circuit. Okay, so again, all this requires is a systematic circuit analysis. Your short circuit port two. And apply V1 to port 1, and then you can calculate Y11 and Y21. Your short circuit port 1, apply V2 to port 2, then you can calculate Y12 and Y22. Okay, so please give me the values of uh, Y12 and Y22. Okay, please calculate Y one two and Y two two. Okay, Arthi, you have got point six two five millisiemens. Again, uh, there is some uh, calculation error. Please make sure that you, sorry, with this one, uh, with this is y two two. Okay, so yeah, y two two is point six two five. Yeah, that's correct. So that is the correct answer. What about the value of uh, y one two? Sumit has got minus point one three millisiemens. This is not correct. Okay, please check your answer. Remember, y one two is i one divided by v two with port one short circuited. Okay, no, it is negative. That's okay, but even the number is not correct.
value of uh, y22 is 0.625 uh, millisiemens that's correct okay what is the value of y12 So to calculate y12, you have to apply v2 to 4 2 and calculate this current flowing in port 1. Okay. So again, I think Sumit has got it right. So it is minus 0.5 millisiemens. Okay. So the y parameters of this network are 1 millisiemens, minus 0.5 millisiemens, minus 0.5 millisiemens, and 0 0.625 millisiemens. Okay. So this and this we already discussed. We will look at the other two. To calculate Y22, what we do is we do short circuit port 1 and apply V2 here. Okay. Now, uh, You see that this uh, 2 kilo ohm is in parallel with 8 kilo ohm, okay, because this is short circuited. So, this 2 kilo ohm is in parallel with this 8 kilo ohms, okay. So, essentially, you see a conductance corresponding to 2 kilo ohm in parallel with 8 kilo ohms, okay. I2 by V2 will be 1 by 2 kilo ohm parallel 8 kilo ohm, which is. 2 kilo ohm times 8 kilo ohm, 2 kilo ohm plus 8 kilo ohms. Okay. This is 10 by 16, and you have kilo ohms in the denominator, so it is millisiemens. So this is 0 0.625 millisiemens. Okay. And to calculate y12. What I have to do is to find this current, sorry, I1, okay, as a function of V2. I apply V2 and find I1. So, again, I you see that this V2 appears directly here, and also because this is short circuited, V2 appears here. So, the current flowing from right to left through this 2 kilo ohm resistor is V2 by 2 kilo ohms and at this node you have the short circuit and the 2 kilo ohm. So obviously all of the current will go that way. So I1 is minus V2 by 2 kilo ohms which says that Y12 is minus 0.5 millisiemens okay so we, we end up getting this set of y parameters okay 
So now, uh, first of all, is the procedure clear to everybody? I think many of you made uh, uh, mistakes while calculating. Please avoid that. With a little bit of practice, you will be able to uh, avoid those things. Okay. So please mind the units like kilohms and millisiemens and so on. And also, uh, please mind exactly where the current is flowing. Okay. Because when you short circuit it, some of the uh, components drop out of the picture. Is this okay? Calculation of Y parameters. Okay. Now, uh, my question is, Y12 and uh, Y21 came out to be exactly equal, minus 0.5 millisiemens. So, now my question is, is this a coincidence for this circuit or uh, what do you think it is? So what I'm asking is, uh, Y12 and uh, Y21 are the same. Now, is this a coincidence for this circuit, or uh, what is it? Now, oh, one of you answered that it's because of this 2 kilo ohms. Now, that's how we calculated it. But actually, this is a fundamental property of a resistive network. It uh, doesn't have to do anything to do with this particular topology. Okay. Because we already saw, uh, and as one of you answered, if you have only resistors, that is uh, not just a linear circuit, but something that has only a uh, resistors in it. Okay, it obeys reciprocity theorem. Okay, or it's a reciprocal network. And reciprocity uh, can be uh, thought of in uh, different ways. When we apply uh, voltages to the two sides or currents to the two sides or voltage to one side and current to the other side. So, if you recall, this is the terminology we had used. So, this is how we evaluated reciprocity. Now, uh, the reciprocity result was that I2 by V1, that is you apply a stimulus to the left, find the cause on the right side or uh, and it will be exactly the same as I1 hat divided by V2 hat, where you apply a stimulus to the right side and find the uh, effect on the left side. Okay. Now, if you look at this picture, this port 2 is short circuited and you are applying V1 and measuring I2. So, clearly, this is nothing but y to 1. Okay. So, this is basically measuring y to 1 here. And similarly here, you are short circuiting port 1 and applying v2 hat. So, this i1 hat will be nothing but y12 v2 hat. Okay. And this number will be y12. So, y to 1 will be equal to y12. Okay.
So this y12 being y21 is a fundamental property of all resistive circuits because if you have a circuit containing only resistors, it is going to be reciprocal and y21 will be equal to y12. And in fact, you can also look at that as a statement of reciprocity. If you are given the dupole parameters and if y21 equals y12, you call it a reciprocal network and if uh, it is not equal, it is a non-reciprocal network. Okay. There is a question, if the cause and effect are the same, that is current or voltage, can we apply reciprocity? Now, yeah, we have evaluated that, right? So, if you uh, consider the case where we evaluated reciprocity with the right side open circuited or Okay. So, this corresponds to applying a voltage on the left side, measuring the voltage on the right side or applying a current on the right side and measuring a current on the left side. And in this case also reciprocity is true. We saw that V2 by V1 equals minus I1 hat by I2 hat. Okay. Now, this will uh, have an implication of another set of uh, two port parameters. Okay. So, I hope uh, this is clear. Now, let me uh, quickly extend the example. So, let me copy this whole thing over here. Okay, so this is the result we have got and I will very slightly modify the network. This is just to make sure that you have understood what we have done. Let me say I cross these wires and call this 2 and 2 prime. Okay, so which parameters will change and how will they change? Okay, we have four y parameters y11, y12, y21, y22. Now I have the same circuit but I cross these wires. Okay, so this is a new circuit but I have taken the old circuit and modified it slightly. So what will be the y parameters of this? So one of the answers is that uh, it is exactly the same as before. Now I have changed the, I mean I have changed the terminals 2 and 2 prime, will it not make any difference? Another way to think about it is that uh, now this is 2 and this is 2 prime, okay. So there is an answer that says diagonal elements will be interchanged. Why is that? So that means that y11 will become y22 and y22 will become y11. Why will that happen?
another answer says diagonal will be zero again why is that so i suggest that you actually do the short circuiting and calculate the parameters okay and then you will see immediately what the answer is and another answer says that y21 equals minus y12 now this is not really possible right because uh, for any resistive network uh, we just said that they are reciprocal so y21 has to be equal to y12 they could be different from uh, what it was for the original circuit but even for the new circuit which consists of only resistors y21 has to be equal to y12 okay there is another answer that says sign change but sign change of which parameters all of them some of them which ones those which are associated with uh, port 2 no that is not correct okay yeah so y12 and y21 will change sign okay so first of all uh, let's calculate y11 and y2 y1 uh, y21 okay so how do you calculate uh, y11 and y21 you short circuit this okay which is the same as short circuiting this one and you apply v1 okay now whether you short circuit this way or that way it's exactly the same circuit okay so the current flowing here cannot possibly change okay you can do the calculation completely and then verify it but the current flowing here and there has to be exactly the same because it's the same circuit after all and we are measuring the same current okay so this will be 1 milli siemens now uh, for uh, y12 was oh sorry y21 i have to measure i2 okay so that is flowing from 2 prime to 2 if you compare to the previous situation all that has happened is previously i was measuring the current going this way and now i have to measure the current going that way okay because of the definition of 2 and 2 prime okay the current will be exactly the same because uh, the circuit is exactly the same okay so i2 this blue uh, current i have marked will be minus 0.5 milli siemens times v1 same as before okay but in this case the i2 i am interested in is in the opposite direction so this will become plus 0.5 milli siemens okay now similarly you can verify for yourself first of all uh, for a resistive circuit y12 and y21 have to be exactly the same so this is 0.5 milli siemens also okay and this you can verify for yourself that it remains the same as before it is 0.625 milli siemens okay is this clear okay now one of the things you have to observe in fact if you are given a purely resistive circuit y12 has to be equal to y21 this you can even use for sanity check right if you calculate them separately 
and uh, you find that y12 has become different from uh, y21 that means that you have made a mistake in the calculation by the way this is for circuits which have only resistors if you have control sources the game is different and y12 and y21 can be different from each other okay so that is one thing and secondly also if you have only uh, resistors both y11 and y22 will be positive okay so again let me look at uh, this picture here where we are calculating y11 okay to calculate y11 we take the ratio of this to that one now let's say inside you have only resistors so that means that there will be a power loss okay now if uh, i1 by v1 happens to be negative that means that looking into 1 1 prime you have a negative resistance which generates power that's not possible okay so if you have only resistors in the uh, circuit it can only dissipate power so y11 has to be positive similarly y22 also has to be positive okay so these are some things that you can use as sanity checks y11 and y22 have to be more than 0 and y12 equals y21 okay any questions about uh, what we have done so far Okay, so now instead of uh, applying voltages and finding currents, we can apply I1 and I2, okay. and determine V1 and V2 as a result of I1 and I2, okay. As before, if you make I2 equal to 0, then both V1 and V2 will be proportional to I1 because this is a linear network, okay. So with V2 equal to 0, I1 will be, sorry, uh, V1 will be some number, I will call it Z11 times I1 and V2 will be some number Z21 times I1, okay. So this is with I2 equal to 0. Similarly, with I1 equal to 0, both V1 and V2 will be proportional to I2, okay. So we will end up with V1 being Z12 times I1 and V2 being Z22 times, sorry, Z12 times I2 and V2 being Z22 times I2. Now, if both I1 and I2 are non-zero, by superposition, you will get the sum of these things, okay. So, here uh, voltages are expressed as uh, some function of currents and these numbers, what will be the dimensions or units of these numbers? Z11, Z12, Z21 and Z22.
So clearly you multiply I1 by some number to get a voltage. So these have dimensions of resistance and units of ohms. Okay. And again for compact notation you end up using this matrix form, sorry, I have to write V1, V2 as a function of uh, I1, I2 and these are known as Z parameters, okay. Now there is a question, if uh, current direction is opposite, what will be V1 and V2? It will be negative of whatever we have here, okay. Now like I said, this uh, uh, V1 and I1 for the two port, okay. So this V1 and I1 and V2 and I2 are chosen with passive uh, sign convention, okay. So if V1 is positive on top, I1 will be flowing into the terminal. Similarly, when V2 is positive on top, I2 will be flowing into that terminal. Okay. Now, in this case, I have applied I1 and I2 in the same direction. So, just like previously, when I applied these voltage sources, I took upper one to be positive and the lower one to be, sorry, upper one to be positive in both places. Okay. Now, that is how uh, these parameters are defined. If you apply an external current which is flowing downwards in both cases, it will simply become negative, that is all, okay. So these are known as uh, Z parameters, okay. Now in the next lecture, we can uh, discuss uh, this in uh, some more detail. I will quickly introduce uh, two more uh, parameter sets and we can uh, close today's lecture. We have applied voltage sources on both sides or current sources on both sides. It is also possible to do a hybrid, okay. That is, I apply a current I1 on the left side and I apply a voltage V2 on the right side, okay. Then I will measure the two unknowns which is V1 and I2, okay. So the reason to have all these choices is that there are some practical situations where one or the other is convenient, okay. So in this case, if uh, V2 is 0, okay, then both V1 and I2 will be proportional to I1, okay. V1 will be something times I1 and this is denoted by the letter H, H11 times I1 and I2 will be H21 times I1. And if I1 is 0, both V1 and I2 will be proportional to V2, okay. So we will have H12 times V2 and H22 times V2 as V1 and I2. And if both I1 and V2 are non-zero, you will end up having the superposition of the two, okay. So, and these are known as H parameters, okay. So, please think about the dimensions of uh, these numbers, dimensions or units of these numbers. Similarly, the fourth alternative is to have V1 apply V1, apply I2 and measure V2 and I1. In this case again, when I2 is 0, both I1 and V2 will be proportional to V1, okay. So I1 will be some number G11 times 
v1 and v2 will be some number g21 times v1 and when i1 is 0 sorry v1 is 0 i1 and v2 will be proportional to i2 so we will have g12 i2 and g22 i2 okay and these are known as g parameters so in this case also please think about uh, the dimensions and units of these four numbers okay because now we have in some cases current and some other case voltage and so on okay so please think about these things we will continue from here in the next lecture now uh, there is a question i guess this refers to this previous one where i have i1 upwards and i2 downwards or something the corresponding term will become negative okay so these uh, this formulation is for the two port okay as v1 and i1 and v2 and i2 defined this way for the two port okay so if the externally applied currents so let me change the notation so that it is not confusing ia and ib okay so if you make ia downwards i1 will be minus ia so that's what will come here but uh, this definition is assuming the passive sign convention for the two port network okay with that this v1 will be like this and i1 will be flowing into the plus sign v2 will be like that and i2 will be flowing into the plus sign so that's how the parameters are defined this is similar to if you have this is similar to the passive sign convention for any component if you have a resistor we apply v like this and current going into the positive uh, uh, terminal of this voltage and take the ratio v by i that is the resistance okay so we don't take i going that way similarly this is by convention we use the passive sign convention for the uh, two port network okay so if there are any questions i'll answer them otherwise uh, we'll uh, stop here and then continue with uh, the other parameters in the next lecture okay so in the meanwhile i will uh, encourage you to calculate the z parameters of this network okay You calculate the Z parameters of this and see how it is related to the Y parameters of the same network. Okay. Okay, so it appears that there are no questions. Uh, I'll see you next week. Okay. Stopped.